Hey, welcome to this 10 minute lightning talk. We're not just relational anymore, teaching Neo4j as part of an introductory database course presented by Risa Myers. You can now start, Risa. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome from Houston, Texas. Uh, so I'm gonna, in this brief talk, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about who I am, what RICE is about, what we're doing at RICE, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, and where we're hoping to go. So first off, who am I? Uh, my email address, if anybody wants my slides or wants more information, I'm happy to share my materials, is there. I'm an assistant teaching professor at Rice University. So that means I'm focused on teaching. Um, my, I teach databases and data science classes, and I teach them at both the undergraduate and the graduate level. One of the interesting things about my classes is I don't just get computer science students. I get kind of a half computer science population and half everything else. And it makes it a really interesting dynamic in the class because everyone's coming from different directions. Uh, I have a PhD in computer science, also from Rice University. It's actually pretty recent. I did it pretty late in life. Before that, and a little bit after that, uh, I had a lot of industry experience. I started as a software engineer. I've worked in information technology and project management, systems analysis, and most recently as a data scientist. I really consider myself a data person, right? I love data and databases, and that's what I uh, enjoy the most and uh, like sharing with others. So Rice University uh, is in Houston, Texas. Um, we have about 7,000 students overall in the university. Uh, the computer science department is currently the largest major in the school and has been, and we don't see an end to that anytime soon. Uh, we have about 370 undergraduates, about 150 uh, master students, and about 120 PhD students in our program. Uh, we have about 34 faculty and we're hiring. So if we have any academics on the phone who are interested or on the call who are uh, interested in joining a new institution, we are constantly hiring and looking for good people. And we're considered a top 20 computer science program. So I want to talk about where did this start from? Uh, what we had for a very long time was one introduction to database systems course. It was kind of this comprehensive class that covered relational SQL, you know, declarative SQL and imperative SQL, and it was really all about the relational model. Entity relationship diagrams, the ACID properties of transactions, the plus trees, all this kind of standard database stuff that people are used to learning. And what happened was a few years ago, the instructor for that class decided, okay, enough. Time to do something different and time to do something challenging and take the class to the next level. So he started teaching a database implementation class where people don't just, which there were aspects of that in the previous class, but this one was really focused on hardcore C++ programming, implementing these data structures that are required for relational systems, implementing query processing and optimization, and having people really build not just a database, like it says here, but a database system. And what that did was it created an opportunity to rethink how the database intro class was being taught. And that's really where I came in. And I came back and I said, okay, how do we focus instead of on a database implementer or someone who's gonna do the whole picture, how do we focus on a power user? Someone who's going to use databases in a lot of different ways, but doesn't necessarily want to build one. We need to teach them enough about the internals so they can make good decisions. The, this first talk in this session by Luann really resonated with me, right? I tell my students the answer in this, the most common answered questions in this class is it depends. What database you use depends on what you're trying to do with it. How you design a database depends on what you're trying to do, depends on what your situation is. So having this, taking away some of the implementation details of a database gave me the ability and the time to add in some new NoSQL content. And that's something I chose to do. Right, so why did I do this? There's lots of things I could have done with that time in the class, but reality is the world is no longer fully relational, right? We have a lot of other database systems that people are actively developing and actively using. Uh, one of the fantastic things about this is it really gives students experience and exposure to, to different kinds of databases and to getting used to, okay, there's just a new kind of database system. I'm gonna learn how to do that. I'm gonna figure out what are the core concepts here? How do I store data? What kind of data does it store? What are the benefits? What are the advantages and disadvantages of this? It also teaches them to manage different types of data. Not all the data we see anymore is CSV data. The students love it, right? It makes them competitive. As soon as they take my class, they put on their CV. Okay, they know Neo4j, they know MongoDB, uh, and they really enjoy it. I get a lot of positive feedback about this part of the class. So it's been a couple of semesters now that I've been doing this. Uh, I am by no means an expert in Neo4j. Uh, the class evolution started with a document store because in some ways that's a very simple concept. It's not too far off from the relational model. And it also started by having the student, one, I added 
let's talk about NoSQL in general. So it was kind of a survey of these different concepts and what kinds of systems are out there. And then we actually spent some time having the students use a document store. They also had the opportunity to start doing a graduate student project. And what happened was they're told, okay, you can find some tables and build a query, you know, build some queries and build, write some code, or you can pick a new database system and build a toy example and demonstrate that for us. And that's exactly what one team did. They chose to start looking at Neo4j and built a small recommender system with it. It's a little toy database to show people, hey, here's the kind of things that happen in this. I was very fortunate that one of the students who was part of that team was willing to TA for me the next semester and we could turn that now into a part of the class. We developed some lecture material, we developed an assignment. Uh, we chose that semester to install the Neo4j desktop software on the students' computers. That wound up being a real challenge. We had 105 students that semester and a very wide variety of uh, computer capabilities, right? Some had a lot of memory, some didn't, some had some really old operating systems. It, it wound up being a challenge. But we did do this first pass through the system. Uh, this semester, I'm doing it again. We haven't hit that part of the semester yet, but we're going to actually use a hosted solution instead of trying to touch the desktops. And I've also found that uh, one lecture wasn't enough specifically on the graph database, so I've added more content to that later on. Uh, so really, the way this works is I first introduce them to the NoSQL concepts, these specialized systems. What are the characteristics of them, right? They're more scalable, they have dynamic structure, they're flexible, they're focused on performance. And we talk about how do you choose which database to use. We do document stores first, and then we go to the graph database, and we talk specifically about Neo4j concepts. We talk about the design trade-offs, right? Do you make something a property, or do you make it a node? What are the building blocks in Neo4j? OK, all the relationships in Neo4j are directional, but when do you want to treat relationships as non-directional? And we go through a lot of Cypher examples. So here's a sample slide where we start off. Uh, this is a little database model. It shows them, remember that at this point, the students are familiar, very familiar with the relational model. So in some ways, it's easy to make some analogies of here's some tables and some relations we might have in a relational model, and here's how it might look in a graph database. Okay, more importantly than the lecture, is giving students a chance to get their hands dirty, let them play with things. So the goal for the assignment that we that I created with my student was to give people a chance to explore Cypher, create some nodes, build some relationships, set some properties. They wanted We wanted them to learn what's easier or harder in a graph database versus a relational database. And we also wanted them to learn some network concepts. Can you compute between the centrality, the degree of a node, look at the shortest paths. And we wanted to provide an environment where they could check their work. So this wasn't a big data assignment. It was something uh, smaller where they could do some other checks and balances to figure out, hey, did it work or not? Okay, so this first uh, time we did this, we have a course, a running theme throughout my course, of we're designing a database for an ice cream food truck. And uh, we, we do an entity relationship diagram with that, and they do imperative and declarative SQL on it. And we also had them, for the document store, collect tweets about ice cream food trucks. So it was collecting JSON data, dumping it into a, a document store. For a follow-on for this, to keep along with that theme, uh, we had collected some Twitter data about different food trucks. I think most of them are in Houston, but I'm not sure. Um, looking at which ones have, who's following which of these trucks. And we could build a, pull together some data saying, okay, how many followers do these trucks have in common? How many followers do they have total? Those kind of things. And then we let the student, we gave that network to the students and let them analyze it. So what they had to do was create the relationships. We gave them the raw data. We had to count the number of trucks a particular follower follows, find, you know, find the in degrees and out degrees of trucks find out who's, which truck is sharing the most followers with other trucks, things along those lines. And then even some queries of the kind of a mini recommendation system. Can you find trucks that one follower follows that another doesn't follow? So maybe this other person wants to follow this truck. And then we had them do some really fast things that Neo4j excels at, like find the shortest path between the trucks. Uh, for the extra credit, I had them implement this between a centrality metric in relational, relational system, which is really hard to do. So students really were excited by the contrast of, oh my gosh, this is so hard and relational, but so easy in Neo4j. So there's a lot we learned uh, that first semester. We didn't cover enough in class. In particular, we needed to add more examples. And the data was a little too connected. We also learned, like I said before, that the installation of students' machines can be pretty challenging. So this semester, we've got a new assignment coming up. Uh, and we start off, and it's, I know this slide is hard to read, but we basically, uh, the idea here is that our food truck is going around from the different residence halls and college. And we're starting with a fairly sparse or a sparsely connected network. 
with the orange uh, nodes being the undergraduate residences and the blue ones being the graduate residences. And then, well, what happens as we add paths or add shortcuts between the different institutions or different buildings? Um, so we give them a chance again to modify the network and give them kind of this building up of questions from easy to hard on how to how the how to query the database and how to see the the impact of the change in the network on uh, their results. So overall, um, students really value this. They they love being able to say, "I didn't just learn a relational database system. I learned a document store. I learned a graph database." Uh, I want to point out that this is an evolving portion of the class. It's something that's changing pretty radically every semester as I learn more from my students and I learn more from the exercises I give them. And I also want to put a plug in that Neo4j is starting an educator program and I believe that's launching soon. And that's going to provide some resources for people learning Neo4j. And again, here's my email address if people uh, want to reach out to me. And I have some fairly simple uh, Hunger Games questions because this isn't a very difficult, uh, it's kind of an overview lightning talk. Um, and the third question is really, were you paying attention? How big is rice? Because I wasn't sure what else to ask. And I'm happy to take any questions. Oh, so someone's asking to offer any of these classes online. That's a great question. Uh, we actually kind of do. We recently, this semester, we launched, um, I think it's called, shoot, CS at Rice. We, we launched an online master's program, and one of the first courses that we are offering is a database class. Um, I don't teach it, someone else does, but I know that he is, all, and we've worked together, he is also teaching both um, MongoDB and Neo4j, so document stores and relational databases as part of that class. And honestly, I see us adding more NoSQLs, or us, me, right? I'm planning on growing this. Uh, it's maybe not, I know this is a Neo4j conference, um, but I also see the value in adding breadth in databases. So I see, okay, I'm gonna add a key value store exercise going forward or a column store. Column store. It's really developing people's muscle and expertise and experience and ability to pick up new database models and to run with them and to figure out how to, when do I use these and how do I use them so it's not, unfamiliar or new to them. It's like, okay, I'm used to trying a new database. I can figure out a new database. Well, thank you very much, Risa. We appreciate your presentation and we wish you all the best. I hope thank you. you get a lot more students that, <laughs> that capture using Neo4j. <laughs> That's great. Thank you.